Hide and Seek, the game of development. Life and work, it seems to me, is a game of hide and seek. At some point, we hide our true selves and wait for others to seek us out. This game may be fun at first, but what if, at my final curtain, I was still the child hiding in bushes, intrepidly waiting to be discovered and found? The treasure that we hide, that only we know, and wait for others to find, is your most authentic and able self. There's something more we so desperately seek outwardly has no material solution. It cannot be satisfied by a bigger car, house or even the best partner. Though our logic would have us believe otherwise. For in our delusion we blindly seek outwardly the treasure that we have buried within. If we were able to lift our veil from our eyes, we would see that the something more that we seek in life is simply our longing to become who we most naturally are. We fashion ourselves in the likeness of others in wanting to be praised and approved. But in doing so, we betray ourselves. This speaks to the very root of our suffering. But let's not judge our flaw too harshly. For maybe our limited logic cannot conceive of the true mystery of our lives. What if we are meant to lose our path in order to find our way? The sanctuary we seek can never fully be found in the arms of another, though we play life's fairy tale and may wait for our prince on horseback, or to stumble across a princess asleep for a hundred years, waiting to be awakened by our kiss. No, it is you and you alone who hold the key, and you and you alone who know the secret code of your combination lock, though we wait for others to find us, only you know your true whereabouts. However, in borrowing the eyes of certain others, you can open your own to see the treasure you once buried. And if we think together, we may remember the game that we decided to play. How remarkable that we need a practitioner, someone who is willing to lose their way in order that we may find our own. Someone who is willing to not know in order that we can remember. Someone who gives up on needing to answer and through their non-judgmental questions enable us to discover our own solutions. Someone who sees potential 
when we are lost in our problems? Is this how we solve the riddle of who we truly are? And who would have guessed that not knowing may be our greatest act of intelligence? The practitioner is a wayfarer. We tread new ground. We permit ourselves to be taken in order that others may be found. Is this not the greatest act of service? And the benefits are not one-sided, for in our willingness to lose our way, to not solve, to not know, even to end all our compulsion to have or to want or to need, we experience what it is to be non-judgmental and unconditional and to be at peace with ourselves and so with others. And then and only then, when we have stopped trying to be masterful, we are gifted an effortless excellence that is never ours to fully own, more to borrow just for a while, yet it ever awaits our return if we can only submit to our need to find it. Not knowing is the secret to wisdom when the practitioner is willing to lose themselves, they too are found. And so it may be that we end our game of hide and seek. The practitioner permits themselves to be lost in order that others may be found. The practitioner on the surface works with developing performance, effectiveness, productivity and accountability, the outer face of our work. Yet just beyond the visible, the practitioner also enables a process within that is more based on quality than any quantitative measure. It is how we are in what we do that makes the difference. Through our qualities of presence, empathy and compassion, we enable our clients the prospect of following the source of their innate desire to find the motivation to foster self-awareness and new choices and to develop and change for the better. The practitioner iteratively enables others to become the best they can be. Mindful that in doing so, we too are equally remembered and rediscovered. I too confess that I could not help end the game of hide and seek if I had not played it so well, and honour that at some point the game was essential and that it was another practitioner who helped me to find myself, that here I am gifting the same prophecy to you. What I do realise is that through our practitioning, we inform humanity, and in deepening our authenticity, we also invite our clients to claim back 
the parts of themselves that they have once rejected. And then, and only then, the great divide that we suffer is made whole and there is no need to hide or to seek.